<laughs> Hold on. How? Does it not? Hold on. Hold up. Oh, there we go. Cool. Okay. I can never tell the difference between like any of these platforms because every but everyone has like a different high. Everyone has like a different place to put like things on their user interface. So I'm just like, I don't know how to do the front camera or anything like this. Hello, hello. I still think it's kind of awkward to do like, thanks. Hi guys, hello everyone. Hi, 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 hi. I still think it's kind of weird to do like live streams in um, landscape mode. Hello, Essex, hi. Um, because you can't really see, like, it's harder to see things, I think. Like, landscape is kind of cool if, hi there. Oh, from Brazil. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, landscape, it's, it's nice to see, like, if you're doing a wide thing, but if I'm trying to, like, read text but still show off as much of like what I'm doing. Well, right now I'm not doing anything interesting. I'm just like cleaning dishes, washing dishes right now. But like, yeah, I don't know. Can, if I were to, if I did try to do, maybe y'all can help me in the chat. Um, if I did try to do a live on YouTube in portrait mode, like would it work or would it just be sideways? You know, cause like, I don't even know like how new live streams are to YouTube or if anyone's even talking in the chat right now. Cause I can't even see, I can't see anything. Hi. Just bear with me a little bit here. I'm just uh, cleaning up a little. Oh, I guess I didn't even realize what time it is. You're not sure. Early dinner? Is it? It's eight o'clock, it's not early. I don't think it's early at all. <laughs> Normally I have dinner way earlier than this. This is like a late dinner for me, but um, my partners just skipped town for five days for work. So I literally like have no one to eat with. Dishwashing the ASMR, yes. The video player on YouTube automatically adjusts to the dimensions of your video. Wait, hold up. So I can go portrait like this. Okay, so so what if, if, if I did, thank you so much for, <laughs> so if I did do this, Oh, nope, never mind. Okay, so I have to start. So what has to... <laughs> YouTube just yelled at me for trying to flip orientation. But, so I guess what I have to do next time is... It's not really ASMR. -y. Um, 40 degrees for grocery shopping. That sounds awful. So I have to start uh, my lives in portrait mode and then I will have portrait mode like hello ah I'm in Detroit too what up neighbor you love that kimchi video 2 a.m but I think today's miso day went to the shop trying to make Japanese miso but I got the Korean soybean paste denjang dunk denjang I don't know how to pronounce it, but also very good for soup. Um, the Korean tofu soup is delicious using denjang. Um, it's, and like, I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't have that like fermented flavor of, uh, you know, of miso, which is okay. Back into my dorm. Hi. 
Welcome back. I couldn't read the rest of that message, though. It disappeared before I could do it. Wow, who's that? I heard somebody come in behind me. Who is this? Hi. Hello's. Oh, big stretch. Hi there. What are you doing? You were just, you were a sleepy girl? Who's a sleepy girl? Who's you a sleepy girl? Hi there. Oh. They hear me talking. Hi, Hugo. What's up? Okay. So they hear me talking. They assume uh, that what um, that I'm making food, which is correct. They are correct. I am making food, but I'm making food for me, and it's gonna be tofu. And you guys aren't really interested in tofu. I don't think anyway. Just give this a nice little wipe. I know I'm going to cook on this, but I don't like cooking on like a dirty surface. Or live streaming when I do. I should have cleaned before streaming, but whatever. It's it's all vibes. We're just we're just hanging out. We're just hanging out. Don't forget to like the like. Oh well thank you. <laughs> Alright. So, miso soup. So, the great thing about miso soup is that it's so easy to make because all you need is like miso paste. But I also want to do Japanese sweet potato. I'm going to use a chicken broth base. I think I was on my live the last time we did it. And we're going to do a little mix. We're going to do a mix. Like, so miso soup, uh, miso is very delicate and stuff, but it's still tasty with some chicken stock. And I've got some of my old, my kimchi that I had made in my kimchi video. Little bit on the pungent side, which we do like. Funky is good. But I do want to make mine a little bit more flavorful, a little bit more spicy. So we're gonna make a miso soup with sweet potatoes, but also like mix in some kimchi. So we'll just kind of like a miso kimchi jjigae. But, um, which just sounds like very politically complicated if you know the history of those two countries. But I don't have any denjen, so. <laughs> I guess I lied. <laughs> we're, we're, we're making, we're not really making a miso soup, we're making a kimchi jjigae with miso paste. Um, but I am gonna show you how you pretty much can make anything into a miso soup. We're just, you know, we're figuring it out. Like, it's, it's whatever. These are live streams. And the last thing we need in our lives right now is like more structure. I've got some Japanese sweet potatoes here. Um, if you've never seen a Japanese sweet potato, this is a regular one. This is a regular red sweet potato, and this is a Japanese one. Japanese sweet potatoes or Japanese yams are much deeper in purple in color. When I split this, um, if I were to cut this in half, it would be orange inside here. And in here, it would be milky, milky white. Um, oddly enough, even though there is no orange inside the Japanese sweet potato, there is still some beta carotene in there. Just not as much as a regular sweet potato. The textures are very slightly different. When I roast a Japanese yam or sweet potato, it's a lot creamier. It's a lot, it's, the sweetness is mild. Well, it's sweeter than a regular sweet potato and it's got kind of like a creamy flavor and texture to it. Um, whereas this one has like that very pronounced like sweet potato flavor, which I love. I mean, sweet potato pie is unmatched, so. But, we're gonna use this today. It's great in soup. Maybe we'll, what we'll do is we'll make like a layered soup situation so that I could start with a Japanese sweet potato miso soup with tofu. And then I will just like fry a little bit of my kimchi and then we'll add the soup to that so I could get like some, uh, some soup variety and flavor here. Yeah, I guess what we'll do. Um, and... I am 
cooking for one today, so I'm gonna use a smaller pot. That's that's small, All right? That's small. Okay. Um, what are we gonna start with? Chicken broth. We have some chicken stock that I made five days ago. This was a, uh, what was it? This was, I think it was like a rotisserie chicken chicken. Oh, it was a rotisserie chicken bone broth that I had made. Thank you. We're still figuring it out. I only just learned, thanks to somebody in the chat, that I can change the orientation of these live streams. I can make them in portrait, which actually will help me out the next time I do it because it's a lot easier for me to be closer to the screen and to have everything that's going on while I'm in portrait mode. So widescreen, it is a nice cinematic experience, but you know, I would like more than just like my tits to be in the video for a majority of it. Let's cut up some sweet potato. I think, I think we only need one. We, I think we only need one. I'm just gonna be for myself today. Uh, f other fun fact, um, so you can, s oh, it's not, it was just like, if a sweet potato, do I know Senpai Kai, would I ever collab? The name sounds familiar. I don't know if he's been if they've been mentioned before, but you know, it depends on what they do. I'm not very savvy on other YouTubers. Um, I do know the Korean vegan. Very, very good friends with Korean vegan. Very good friends with a company Matt. Max the meat guy is amazing. Um, as far as food YouTubers or food TikTokers that became YouTubers. Um, those are the ones that I really, really know and have hung out with. I would love to like get some video and some footage of us all hanging out and drinking together and stuff. Um, well not drinking, I don't really drink. Neither does Joanne, but you know. I like to keep the skin on. Have you tried yams cooked in caramel sauce? I have not. That sounds delightful. Oh, Doobie. I do love Doobie. She's the sweetest. I haven't spoken to her in a while. That should, we should change that. Um, I've rinsed this already. I wash all of them first. But uh, I leave the skin on when on all the vegetables that I can. Let me try that sentence again. If I can, I leave the skin on all the vegetables that I eat. Just because it's more nutrient dense that way. And if I'm making it into a soup, then like, what's the harm, really? See, this is what the inside of a Japanese sweet potato looks like. It's um, creamy and white, unlike the regular sweet potatoes that we have here. They also taste really good steamed and roasted. Oh man, if you like wrap this in a tin foil and like, if you're, if you're camping, and you wrap a whole bunch of these in a tin foil and just like throw them in the coals for like 45 minutes um, and just let them sit there and then eat them. You don't need, you don't need to put anything on them. They're so sweet on their own and so delicious. A lot of pla like places like Taiwan, they'll wrap them up in foil and you'll buy these at 7-Eleven and like these will just be wrapped in foil and roasted and you can buy them at a 7-Eleven and just eat them as a snack. They're delicious. Very excited to have this for a soup. I missed that message. I make your tomato egg stir fry all the time. I'm glad you do. It's one of my favorites. So impressed with the dish, the bok choy kimchi. Well, we're using that in soup today. Is it sweeter than orange sweet potatoes? It is. It's got a creamier flavor and texture. Um, well, in my experience, it always has been. But 
you can use them and I feel like you can use them interchangeably in recipes. I do love these roasted though. Like roasted, roasted Japanese sweet potatoes are delicious. Chicken broth is going. And as with any like sweet potato or yam or squash or something like that, when you add these to soup and cook, let them cook, they will uh, thicken the soup and make it a little more substantial as well, which is why I love to add these to this to soup. I can't feed you any. I don't know if dogs can have Japanese yams, so I'm, I'm so sorry. I know you can have pumpkin, um, but yeah, as far as potatoes go, I don't know if I can give you any, so I'm not gonna take that risk, girly. I know, I know it's very sad because you are used to me giving you food, but not right now. Also, mm, <laughs> I am noticing you're getting a little big and I don't want my vet to yell at me. But at the same time, like, look at that. She's just like, feed me, father. I'm so hungry. She had dinner already. So we were adding one whole large Japanese sweet potato to the chicken stock. And we will just let these cook down a little bit or soften up a little in some boiling stock. We'll probably like add some water to it just because like to account for the loss of water as it boils. <laughs> while, that ha while that is going on, I will put away some of these dishes. I do need Tell us about the playlist. It is an aga with an induction top. Good eye, good eye. Where did I work before YouTube? Um, well, technically TikTok. <laughs> I was big on TikTok first, and then I switched to YouTube. Well, I didn't switch to YouTube. I added YouTube to my, to my roster um, of platforms that I like to focus on. Uh, but before that, before I was in social media, I was a chef. And then before I was a chef, I was a cook. And then before I was a cook, I was a, an intern at the prosecutor's office in Wayne County in Detroit. And before that, I was in law school, so. But we're going back like many, many years at this point. YouTube is more immersive. YouTube has more variety. YouTube has more variety. I feel like more, uh, what's it called? I feel more creatively free here because, um, like, I don't know how much y'all follow me with like the rest of my content on YouTube, but I feel like I can do more stuff. Like I won't get penalized for trying, or maybe I do and I just don't notice. Um, but I don't feel like I get penalized for trying something different. Like I've tried so many different video formats for like my long form and my cooking and my shorts and stuff, my cooking videos and my shorts and stuff. And it's all fun. Like I want to be able to do like just one long focus stream of consciousness video that's like unpolished and kind of like honest and raw the way that I've been doing my kimchi, like my last kimchi video, and the uh, master stock video before that. But then I'll still do like a voiceover, polished, short, like, and I feel like it all can live here. When do I stop, start photographing my cookbook? <laughs> the cookbook's been shot. The cookbook's been shot. It was shot last year in, 
August, or no, September. It was shot in September um, by a photographer named Johnny Miller. And he was, uh, he was Martha Stewart's lifestyle photographer for like a few years, for quite a while. I don't even, I think a few years might be like selling him a short, but it was really cool. It was a very much a collaborative effort. He came out of that photo shoot saying that he had done things with like lighting that with like lighting and sets that he had never done before in his food photography. And he's super excited to like bring that with him, which makes me feel really good because a lot of shit was like, a lot of that stuff was like me just playing around and like, let's just be like creative beings together and let's see what happens. And yeah, the team was amazing. Like I had, uh, and food stylists that had worked with Bon Appetit. Um, just like some amazing, amazing people on that team. And it was like two weeks spread over, it was two weeks of shooting spread over like at the top of the month and at the end of the month. And it was just incredible, but exhausting. I'd never been so tired in my life as I was coming out of that shoot. Cause we filmed, we shot, over easily over like 110 different recipes in that time. Cookbooks, they are expensive to make and they are exhausting to make. And uh, I'll let you know if I recommend it. If it does well, I highly recommend it. And if it does not, I do not. This is so much work, oh my god. It'll do well, it'll do well, it'll do well. I'd be, I'd get in so much trouble <laughs> if it didn't. Um, somebody asked me about the playlist, I think. This is my pop culture lo-fi playlist. It is on iTunes. You can follow me at either Chef John Kung or John Kung. I can't remember which one it is. Um, but it's basically it's called, it's basically video game music, TV show theme songs, anime theme songs in like a lo-fi format. It's really good for background music. Let's, let's take a look. Okay, we've got, still have some time, but it's clean over there, which is nice. Starting to soften. I have also like, for the first time, um, hold on, I think I can stand to turn the music down a little bit, but will there be a full video for the rotisserie chicken kanji? Where, where do I live? I live in Detroit. Um, let's turn this down. Uh, there won't be a full video for the rotisserie chicken kanji because I filmed it specifically to be a short. Uh, I think there already exists, well, no, there does, there won't, there doesn't. Um, well, I guess that means I'll have to make one. I want to make a kanji video, like one that's just, that one that covers both rice and oats, different proteins, chicken, specifically chicken, beef, pork, and fish. So when that video comes out, I'll have you in mind. I'll definitely include roast chicken in that one as like a lazy day, a lazy day, but still like high reward kanji. Mm. 
Mm, oh my God, the way that like the chicken broth just like takes in the sweetness of that sweet potato. It's so good. It's already so good. Hi, Hugo, old man. Do I track my macros? I do not, but I used to. Um, when I was like really, really working, like I had gotten myself down to like 7% body fat one year just because like I just wanted to see if I could do it, get like super, super shredded and ripped. Uh, turns out <laughs> once you get down to there, you, uh, you get shredded, but you also get clinical depression. So I do not recommend it unless you plan on becoming a bodybuilder. It came with a whole bunch of issues and it was unsustainable. I was working out six days a week for one hour lifting weights and then topping that off with a six to 10 mile run on my way home because my body has like such a propensity to like just be bigger that like, and I, I was like just starving myself the whole time. I was miserable. Do not recommend. But that was the last time I tracked my macros. Now I just kind of like eat intuitively, which is a little hard to do when you've got raging ADHD because we have a tendency to graze and snack. But, you know, conscious eating, that's, uh, that's I think, it's just better. It's just better. Eat, eat when you're hungry and try to stop when you're full, which, I mean, as Asian people, <laughs> If any of the, if any of y'all are out there, can understand how hard that is, considering the fact that like our parents are like stuff been stuffing us for our entire lives. Do I have any New Year's resolutions? I had a clever one that I thought of yesterday, but I generally don't. Uh, I had totally forgotten what it was. Podcast about mindful eating. Mindful eating is like pretty amazing how full you get when you like just sit down in silence and like enjoy the meal for what it is if you like focus and it's hard especially if you have ADHD uh, especially if you have ADHD like I do um, and it's hard if you just to like sit down and focus on your eating put your mind into every like time you're chewing even counting how many times you chew and just like really noticing your food it gives you a really high appreciation for what you're eating, but at the same time, it's like, it still requires focus, but you will get full really fast. What propelled you from law school to professional cookery? Um, <laughs> the legal profession. Uh, I was involved with a case that put away a 19 year old in prison for like 30 years. And I was just like, Okay, um, he deserved it. He strangled someone to death with his bare hands over some weed. So yeah, did he deserve to go to jail? Yes, he did. Do I want to be the guy that does it? No, I don't. I'd rather cook. And being a cook and just like sharing this with people is the extent of the service that I can, that I think that I can manage with while maintaining my sanity. Not that cooking is all that much more easy than being a lawyer. I don't think it is. I think in some ways it was harder. <laughs> it is, I think in some ways it's much harder, uh, but in the ways that it is more difficult, I think I am more equipped to take it on. So that's why I do what I do now. Well, that's why I cooked and that led me here. Considering using century eggs in my recipes, I, okay. Century eggs, I don't really like, <laughs> I am, um, I'm a super taster, so I'm really, really sensitive to alkaline flavors. So like yellow noodles, ramen noodles, that is like about the extent of alkaline foods that I can handle and still enjoy. Century, so like ramen noodles are like here, century eggs are like here for me. And like, they're just so much that it like, it feel, my nose feels like it's coming inside out through my mouth. Um, 
But when it is chopped up really small and cooked into like a huge vat of congee, like at the professional uh, Chinese places that make like pork and century egg congee, I can enjoy that. I can enjoy it. That is pretty good. I can enjoy it being cooked into something when I'm not eating it on its own. Language barriers mean nothing when food is on the table. You're damn right. Everyone's hungry in the same language. When did you know where cooking was my passion? Um, I think the first time that I like cooked for somebody in a professional setting, like when I was, when I, well, when I started seeing the reactions to people and when I started seeing the effects that food could have on people when they like the food, or well, even when they don't like the food, it can, can be, food can be pretty powerful when it's gross too. But seeing the reactions of people when I ate when they ate food that I cooked, it was just like, I think that, seeing that was like kind of the thing that kept me going for a while. Now it's just for the sake of, now I just make stuff for the sake of making stuff and I find like the act of making things to be, thank you, beef flavor. That was very nice of you. Um, that was very kind, thank you. Uh, I find the act of creating to be, whether it be food or content, to be very self-sustaining and very satisfying on its own. Uh, but before, like, the act of service was really nice. I really, really liked cooking for people. I still like cooking for people. Um, I just don't, I don't break my body doing it now that I used, than I used to. Oh, you tried this to you. Where was he talking about? He's talking about this. He is talking about this soup base called mensuyu. It is like a couple of drops into a bowl of hot water for a nice broth. Um, or no, a couple squeezes into a bowl for a nice broth. Or you can put it into a saucer and make it like a dipping sauce for noodles or anything. This stuff is so, so very uh, versatile. It's in my like, uh, I'm, well, sorry, it's kind of flipped, but let me see if I can just do this. There we go. Yeah, so that's what it is. If you want a screenshot to save what it, save it, you can do that. I'll give you five seconds, four, three, two, one. It is fantastic, highly recommend. It is the thing that I used for my <laughs> most notorious, but also highest performing short on YouTube. Actually, no, that's not true. I think like that random short where I was like cooking eggs with my shirt off was higher performing. It's the second most high performing short um, on, your, on YouTube for good and bad reasons. But this is what I made for the breakfast noodles. That was a really long drawn out way of saying that, but it's a long weekend. Well, it's a long weekend where I am. I don't know what about you guys. Let's try this, see if it's ready. Oh, hot, very hot. Mm. We're like, Yeah, it is creamy. Um, I think... Uh, I think it needs like five more minutes. I really love your content. Your videos give me, get me motivated to cook. Well, I'm really glad they do. And I hope that you're like, inspired to try like new and different things. Do you have a favorite cuisine from any specific country? No. Um, I don't have a favorite cuisine. I've realized recently that I don't really have a favorite cuisine. I have cuisines that I'm in the mood for at any given time. So if I want dumplings or noodles, sometimes I want Chinese food or Japanese food, um, or you know, Vietnamese. They're Thai, but noodles can also mean like, I want pasta, I want 
pierogi, I want like any, any sort of like any variety of things. So if sometimes if I'm in the mood for Japanese food, sushi or whatever, that will be the favorite thing that I want. There's just too many, there's just too many options out there now to love one more than the other because why, yeah, it's just have, give yourself the opportunity to have it all and have whatever it is that you want right now. That is the beauty of living in a globalized society. Die. We can have cheese. I've got cheese. Do you want, do you want cheese? Of course you want cheese. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, while that cooks, we'll give you some cheese. Ugh. Okay. I swear. Next time, next time lives will be in portrait mode. I'm sorry for people who watch YouTube on their computers, but like this, 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 I, this isn't working out. What do you move for? Cheddar? Swiss? Monterey Jack? Colby Jack? I got a, it's a value pack, so. Okay. Um, we will do Swiss. Let's do Swiss. I'm also gonna eat a piece of this. Okay, we'll put you over here so you can actually see. not special if you just do random tricks before I even ask. Then they're not tricks, then you're just like going through the motions. I want you to think about it first. Think clearly, because you know, you do want one of this, but here, stand over here so they can, you can't, you need to be able to see. There you go, okay. No, no, don't rush me. Hey, no, okay. I, no, you don't rush me. You have to speak what I ask you to. Speak. Good girl. Okay, slowly, gently, gently, gently. No, hey, hey. Gently, gently, okay, okay. Good girl. You're feeling anxious because he's right here. You're both gonna get it no matter what, okay? He just gets, he gets cheese because he's sick. Here you go. He gets cheese because He's 16, and living this long is the trick in itself. But you, you have to work for it. So sit pretty good, girl. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, slowly. Good girl. Here you go, bud. Slow, slow. Speak. Good girl. All right, here. Well, the rest is for me. So, I'm gonna eat that. Swiss cheese is pretty good. I don't eat, I don't eat Swiss cheese enough. A long weekend next week for you. Oh yeah. Chinese New Year, happy Chinese New Year. The year of the rabbit, January 22nd. Or Lunar New Year if you're not Chinese. I am, so it's Chinese New Year to me. Mm. Now I think about it, Swiss cheese might be good on like a Buddha chike. Mm. Okay, the soup is ready for the second step. All right, second step. When adding um, miso paste, or miso, to any soup. I've been told that it's better if you, uh, I don't have a small, ah, shoot, I wish I had a, like, a mesh strainer, or a tea strainer or something. Let me see if I've got one. Maybe to, maybe I do. That's one thing I should have brought from the studio that I don't think 
that I did. It's okay. Uh, when you add miso paste to the soup, you should bring it down from boiling because it kind of wrecks the flavor of it. People say it's like, oh, miso is full of like probiotics and stuff like that. We can use this. We can use this paddle because this paddle is like kind of like a rough surface and we can like rub the miso paste on this and it'll more easily dissolve into the soup. Um, we can just use a regular spoon on the other side. So people are like, oh, miso is like, you know, alive and it's got cultures and beneficial stuff in there. It doesn't matter. If even if the soup isn't boiling, if you don't, if you put it in like soon afterwards, I mean, basically if the soup is over 140 degrees, whatever is alive in the miso is going to die pretty much immediately. But we do make sure that it's not boiling when adding it into the soup, simply so that we can prefer, preserve like the delicate flavors. Because once it boils, it kind of like, it flattens out. It's not that it's bad, it's still very tasty and it'll still be perfectly fine, but the delicateness of a good miso is kind of lost if you uh, allow it to overboil. Now, Korean uh, soybean paste, denjang, um, is a lot more robust. I mean, like I've actually, I've kind of like seared it in the pan first before to like kind of bring out some complexity in it. I don't think it's fermented, which is why it's like not so much of a concern and not as delicate and why you can have like boiling, boiling, boiling pots, like dulcet pots of like soup when you make it. So both are related. They are both delicious, but they have different like strengths. So miso is a great finisher, denjang you can cook with. And like, I, if you've seen any of my like, uh, pot roast videos, um, denjang in a pot roast with red wine, chef's kiss. So, so good. Denjang matches amazingly with red wine, which I wish I had, but I don't right now. I would love a glass of wine. How does long does miso paste last? I mean, I don't, I don't really pay attention to it. I go through a lot of it. So, you know, there is a, what's it called? There is a bit of turnover. Oh, thank you. I didn't appreciate all the recipes. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. And I appreciate this and your support um, of the channel. So thank you very much for that. Nicholas Bradley. Um, what was I saying? I totally forgot. I lost track. <laughs> oh, how long does miso paste last? It pretty much lasts till it's like all dried up. Like I've kept, I've bought like large bags of it and put it like in a, in a jar and it's, it's fine. It's fine. I mean, as with the quality of anything, like it goes down over time, but is this, oh, <laughs> it's like so simple, right? Just like Japanese sweet potato and miso and white miso paste and some chicken broth that we had made before. And the chicken broth itself was unseasoned, very, very mild. Yum. Damn, that is, that's really, that's really tasty. Um, <laughs> and that was just like one sweet potato miso paste and chicken broth. Very happy with that. My boyfriend, Toshio, and absolutely upset with all oh, thank you. Hello to the both of you. What is my favorite soup? Uh, whew. Also kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for. I mean, uh, I really, I do love vibrancy of a good like kimchi jjigae or I love, um, you know, Chinese dumplings in broth in like spicy broth. That is delicious. Um, but I also love like gazpacho and vichy soise, which are two like vegetable based cold soups. Um, 
It's hard to think of a favorite. Same reason, same reason why I don't have a favorite cuisine. I just like to be able to have whatever I want when I want it, and that's my favorite. What is my cardio workout routine? Um, I've switched my exercise routine. Um, I see a trainer three times a week now, and we do strength training. Uh, and his version of strength is like a very dynamic strength training where it's like a lot of focus on movement, lower weights, higher reps than I normally am used to. Um, and then every day that I am not doing strength training, I'm doing some kind of cardio, which is like either incline walking or running on a treadmill while watching Netflix or reading a book. I just got started on this book today. Um, I have read two chapters of it and kind of fell into it hard because I was on a treadmill walking. It's called The City We Became. Um, I was on a treadmill walking while reading this book and I did not realize that it was time to go and that I had been reading for two hours while walking on incline on the treadmill and sweating my butt off while reading it. The City We Became is about, it's, it's crazy. It's a sci-fi fantasy book. And as far as I know right now, it's like apparently the oldest cities on the earth, like once cities have reached a certain age and a certain size, they become like these sentient beings with their own avatar, not avatar, like not my last bender avatar, but like kind of like Aeon representatives to fight on their behalf and New York City is about to become this. But then you have cities from all around the world like Paris and Sao Paulo and London that have already done this. So like cities are they're kind of like their own magical beings. It's great, it's super, super cool. And like, I go to New York a lot. I love New York, not to live, but I love New York as a city. So like, I recognize a lot of stuff. It's, it's great, it's a great book. Um, well, I can't really say it's a great book. I'm on page 34, but as far as that, I love it. Is there any cuisine you universally haven't liked? No, that doesn't exist. I can find something to love with everything, with everything that I've eaten. When do you expect to release your book? Can't wait to buy it. Also want to read the one that you're talking about now. Um, so the one that I'm talking about now is called The City We Became and it is by, how do I, by N.K. Jemison. So it's letter N, letter K, J-E-M, Jemison. J-E-M-I-S-I-N. Um, and my book comes out in the fall, hopefully, hopefully. That's the goal. Uh, oh, I used up all my scallions earlier today. Ouch. That's not good. What can I use instead of scallions? I've got pesto. I've got arugula. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Instead of scallions, well, if you can't put scallions in a soup, you might as well put ch chili oil in a soup. You might as well put chilies in a soup. It's red and I'll make it a little spicy. Do some scallions for some miso paste. Uh, at this point, I probably I I'd, I would I'd have taken it. You can have. You just had cheese. Don't look at me like that, mochi. Also, sweet potatoes with chili oil also like is a winning like top shelf combination. This is a Chinese. Uh, preserved chili thing. It's it's called, well, Qi Sheng Premium Chili Sauce. It is actually really spicy. It's not like any other Chinese chili condiment that I've had where I'm like, this is not spicy. Give me the Korean stuff. Um, this one actually kind of hurts. 
I won't lie, I have to use it very, very sparingly. The oil of this is like that kind of oil that is like, oh, this is, this continues. This is like continuing to be spicy. Like this is not letting up. So that's about as much as I can take for that. We're doing a healthier dinner today because I had dumplings for lunch. If you follow my, follow me on Instagram, I should later show you the dumplings that I had for lunch. Ooh, okay. There's a chair. We do enjoy a good sit. <sighs> sweet potatoes mashed tonight. Yeah. Sweet mashed sweet potatoes are, are delicious with a little bit of chili oil. Very nice. This is a light, by the way, for like when I do a studio lighting. Um, we call it the, the little moon. <laughs> I made it spicy, but it is very good. So I couldn't help but notice that um, there are not many live streams on YouTube. Where do you get those Weifang dumplings? You couldn't find them at H Mart or 99 Ranch. I am very surprised that 99 Ranch doesn't have them. Um, because they're, <coughs> they're Chinese. Oh, drinking spicy soup is treacherous. I would check out w, the app Wee, W-E-E. -E. If, you, if you have 99 Ranch by you, any ways to use Lao Gan Ma? Lao Gan Ma is delicious, but it's not spicy to me. I like putting Lao Gan Ma on pizza and mac and cheese and fried chicken. But if you use Wee, W-E-E-E, -E -E, um, and tried searching for those dumplings, you might have better luck. But it's kind of like, if you find a store that sells them, keep that store close to your heart because Weifang dumplings are the best. It is good. Oh my God. Mm. So yeah, Japanese sweet potatoes. Um, chicken broth, miso paste, chili oil, delicious. People used to do more lives on here. I don't know why it stopped. Well, thank you. Um, I think there's just like so many different platforms now. I think a lot of the people who do lives professionally, I do lives kind of just like as a way for us to hang out. Like I don't depend on live streams for any kind of income. Um, I appreciate, obviously, any of the support that you can get and it goes straight into like creating more content, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't do it regularly for that. I just do it to hang out. And I also split my lives between two places. I would say I have a moderately high spice tolerance. What do you eat when your stomach doesn't feel great? White rice or congee? Um, you should grow your beard. I can't, I can do my best, but this gets really patchy and pronounced and I don't like it. So this is a, as like scruffy as I get. Oh yeah. So I do live streams on YouTube and then I might do them on TikTok as well on YouTube. I do cook with me's, so I actually cook. Yeah, I am done cooking, sorry. we now I'm eating now. Now, it, now we've turned this into eat with me. Um, but like every time I do a YouTube live, I'm always like cooking something start to finish because YouTube saves my lives and I feel like it's a little more, you know, it's a little more substantial if your lives get automatically saved and put on your feed and stuff like that i want everyone who like watches through to get something from it it was so nice meeting you at chicago for andy's book release that was so cool um and i have such it's funny too i have such immense stage fright when it comes to being around like live people i don't know why that was the second book tour that I was asked to be a moderator at. 
and I was terrified. I was so sweaty in my pits after that. <laughs> after that. But Andy and I went out and we went drinking afterwards and it was fun. It was great. I love that man. He's so cool. Um, well, thank you. Um, we're eating, we're eating dinner together too. Yeah, we're kind of like, it's, I, I like this because we're like having dinner together. But yeah, so I do the cook with me's on YouTube. And I cook from start to finish. And then on TikTok, I do like morning lives where it's not, it's not necessary to get ready with me. It's more like a, I'm making tea, we're listening to music and we're just kind of like chill and just chatting because I've been on TikTok for much longer than YouTube. So there, like we just, you know, we chat. Mm. And it feels like, because there is, I, I feel like a need to have and be polished on YouTube a lot more. I do feel like I need to be doing something on my lives. In TikTok, you can just kind of chill because they don't get saved. I don't, ha well, I don't have a Discord server yet. I don't want to like start anything that I can't finish or maintain well. Glad I caught this live. Normally I check the uploads. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too. <laughs> I do like talking to people on my lives. I mean, like it's a, it's a rare opportunity to actually get to like converse with y'all. It's nice. So you're saying that YouTube used to do more lives and then people like migrated to Twitch? I thought people didn't like Twitch. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad you like my videos. Um, the cook with me's are off the cuff. So it's like, I bought this food, I'm in the mood for this, I'm going to like hop on. It's very hard, I don't really, it's very hard for me to schedule anything because I got so much going on. Um, it's kind of just like a nice to have kind of thing. First time here, oh, okay. Hobbies, aside from cooking, um, my hobbies include playing video games, watching TV, and working out or exercising and staying active and playing with my dogs who have abandoned me now that they think that they're not getting any food. Peanut butter and savory dishes. Any recipes where save peanut butter can be used? Yes. So I used to work at a hand, at handmade noodle restaurant in Macau. And they actually used, and this was like a nice 24 hour noodle and kanji restaurant inside a casino there. And they actually used Jif peanut butter as their base for dandan noodles. Which is funny, I do not. <laughs> but I was like, that's crazy. I, I saw the peanut butter and I was like, is that? And I was trying to think like, what in this Chinese restaurant do we have use for peanut butter for it? And I was like, is that for the dada noodles? And then my teacher was like, you're very, very clever. Yes, because of the sugar that's in there and the creaminess of the peanut butter is a really great base to use along with the ground pork and spiciness for um, dada noodles. So yeah, may use peanut butter to make dada noodles. <laughs> it's pretty authentic as it is <laughs> apparently. That piano was a rescue piano. So I went to someone's house in the suburbs or I, like it was an uncle of a friend and he was saying that he was gonna throw out this piano. And ooh, Senegalese. Yes, yeah, Senegalese, um, well, African cuisines in general do feature a lot of really good peanut dishes. Very, very nice peanut dishes. Peanut stew is gorgeous and boil and I like boiled peanuts too I love boiled peanuts that's a southern thing but also a Chinese thing oddly enough but anyways about that piano so that uncle was like I'm gonna throw this thing out do you want it 
And of course I said, I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, it costs a lot of money to send, like, you know, to ship a piano. And then I looked up the piano and stuff like that. It was made in like the 50s and it was made at a, like a piano factory in Detroit, a, the Grinnell Piano Company. And I was like, ah, I have to, I have to rescue it. I have to rescue this piano. And so I did, and it's kind of like, you know, it's got this great mid-century look to it. Completely out of tune, but we'll, we'll fix that. So we got that. And so the guy was like, well, if you're gonna take the piano, the cost of you taking the piano was that you have to take this with you. He was moving out of this house. He was moving out of this house. And so like, you have to take this too. And so I had to pay to get them both shipped, but I didn't have to pay for either of these things, like this grandfather clock, this whole ass grandfather clock that I uh, just like polished up and fixed up and now it actually works. And actually we're, we're pretty close to, it's going to actually chime in like a minute, like a grand, it even has a moon dial. Like it tells you at what phase the moon is, it's nuts. And you can see like how mechanical it is. It's crazy. It's just nuts to see this stuff like, you know, not digital, right? It's like a few minutes fast. I love how I'm just like watching this clock. <laughs> but I want to hear it chime now. Like since I'm here anyway, right? Oh, oh, that was the bus. Here we go. I think it'll work now. Will it? Ah! Oh. It didn't, it didn't chime. I thought it was going to. Well, that was a letdown. <laughs> we can, you had a glance. I think it does. Like when I like sit here, so. <laughs> I think it is funny. So another thing that I fixed up was this fireplace, but it doesn't really work. We closed off this fireplace because who wants a working fireplace? It's just cold and drafty, and it was a gas one. Ooh, damn it! Fun, right? Fun. So instead, we closed it off, and now it's like for candles, but then we like fix this whole like old mantle up. This whole house was down to the studs. Um, so you could literally see this house from one corner of it to the like opposite corner of the house. Through the walls, cause it doesn't have anything. So I designed this, I designed this house myself. It took three years to get to this point, but very happy that I'm here now. Mm. I don't think, thank you. <clears throat> I don't think I have like ever showed anyone on YouTube my house before. But I did design myself a, what city is this? This is Detroit. Um, this is a neighborhood in Detroit called The Villages. Updates on the cookbook, still slated for the fall. Um, and we are making good progress. The design is all done. A crib style tour. When it's done, done. As you can see, there's still a lot that needs to happen, but. I have been, I am actually like, Pretty like, well, industry friends with the chef there. Chartreuse has been there a really long time. 
But yeah, people think Detroit is this like scary rundown place, but I've lived here for nearly like 17 years now, 18 years now. And while it has its rough spots, what city doesn't? It also has some like really nice things about it, like homes that have been empty for since the 1970s that you can buy and fix up and like build your dream home in. I just bit my lip. And it's funny too, cause like, one of the nice things about the city is like, it is coming back, but there's a lot of people here that had already owned their homes. So like the distribution of wealth is still unfair. But, Baobab Fair. Um, I was just there last week and it's really, really good. I like that place a lot. Oh, you like my spice library? It's my kitchen island. So like all of my spices are alphabetically organized. And so like whatever I need, whatever spice I need, it's all, it's all here in drawers. What time is it? Oh, it's nine o'clock already. Well, that being said, um, I think it's time for me. It's time I need to like start like winding down and stuff, getting ready to go. So thank you so much. I will, this was such an easy recipe. I'll just like put it on the description of the video of the live stream real quick. And perfect crossover between industrial and residential. It is all the comforts and the niceness of a residential kitchen, but then all the function of like an industrial one. Like what, not very many home kitchens have a speed rack, but I believe that all of them should, cause I love that thing. <clears throat> but yeah, soon as I post this thing, I'll really quickly put the recipe on there. Super, super easy. And it's really, really delicious. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week or in the chill night and have a great Sunday. Happy Martha MLK Day, Martin Luther King Day, if you are in the United States. And yeah, I will talk to you guys soon and hopefully we'll cook something together real soon. <laughs> Cheers. Take